In this tutorial, uh, we're going to cover the basics of editing a stereo location recording. I have here in this folder uh, a sound file of a live recording that I've made uh, using a stereo pair of microphones. Uh, it's good practice to put the relevant information about the recording in the file name. Uh, and I can see here that this is a 24-bit recording with a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate and uh, it's a recording of a band that was made uh, using a spaced pair of cardioid microphones. In this tutorial we're going to take that raw source recording and perform some quite straightforward and minimal processing on it in order to bring it up to a basic but presentable standard. Uh, the process that we're going to go through applies to any standard stereo recording technique, X, Y, A, B, near coincident, bloom line, except for middle and side, uh, there are some extra steps that will be covered in a separate tutorial. So uh, if you have a middle and side recording, make sure you watch that tutorial as well. In terms of software, the simple processing that we're going to do could be done with any stereo audio editing package, Adobe Audition, Sony SoundForge, Bias Peak. Uh, we're going to use a piece of software called Audacity for the reason that it is an open source audio editor that's freely available online. But before I open the sound file in Audacity, the first thing that I'm going to do is make a backup of the file. So I've got my original file here, uh, I'm going to create a copy and I'm going to simply rename that with the prefix backup. So uh, if I ever want to go back to the original, uh, if I make a mess of the edit or whatever, uh, I've got a backup before I did anything to it. Next, uh, I'm going to open that file in Audacity. file imports and uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is save my project uh, and I'm going to save the project in the same folder as the original recording. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, listen to the recording and trim off any unwanted sound uh, at the start and the end of the recording. So what I can hear there is my own voice when I was setting up and explaining what I was doing uh, and so on. Um, uh, I can see and I can also hear that the, the real audio begins round about here. So there are a few stick clicks uh, and then the uh, performance proper begins round about here. So what I'm going to do is select all of this and uh, hit the delete key on the keyboard and just trim that off. And the same at the end. Uh, I can see roughly here where the, where the music ends. Let's just have a quick listen to that. So um, waiting for the uh, cymbal hit to die down completely uh, and I'm just going to again select by dragging the audio at the end and hit delete to uh, trim that off and save the project. The next thing I'm going to do is normalize the file. Uh, we can see here uh, from looking at the waveform uh, that the levels are actually quite low when I normalize the file, what Audacity is going to do is scan the audio from start to finish uh, looking for the uh, largest amplitude and then scale the whole file up. Now before I can normalize any audio, I have to select the audio that I want to normalize. In this case, it's the whole file, so I can go to the Edit menu and choose Select All, or I could also use the Control a keyboard shortcut I'm then going to go to the Effect menu and choose Normalize. Uh, I then get two further options. Normalize uh, maximum amplitude to minus 3 dB. I'm going to leave that ticked. That means it's not going to maximize it right to the top here. It will leave uh, 3 dB of headroom. Uh, remove the DC offset. I'm going to leave that ticked as well. Click OK. 
We get a little bit of processing and we'll immediately see that the waveform has been normalized and will therefore sound much louder. Now, if this was a middle and side recording, uh, there would now, at this point, be a few additional steps that I would carry out. So if you are using a middle and side recording, you should watch uh, the additional video tutorial that pertains to that. Uh, now what I'm going to look at doing is tidying up this start uh, section here. Let's just have a listen to what it sounds like uh, at the moment. OK, uh, there were a few stick clicks and there was a little bit of unwanted noise right at the start there. So let's say that I want to keep the stick clicks but get rid of the uh, little bit of me talking. What I'm going to need to do is use the zoom tool to zoom in by dragging uh, on the uh, little selection at the start here. And then what I can do is uh, firstly remove the bit that I don't want. So you could see that the stick click started round about here. You can actually see the first one there. So I'm going to remove a little bit more of audio, uh, select it and delete. Let's listen to that again. Okay, now uh, the start is a little bit abrupt. So uh, what I'm going to do is just select the uh, just under half a second of audio before this stick click, like so. And then uh, what I'm going to do is apply a fade in. So uh, from the effect menu again, choose fade in, home, and so uh, we can hear that there's a bit of a smoother fade in. Uh, control F will uh, fit the waveform back so that I can see all of it in the display. And now let's turn our attention to this end section here. Let's have a listen to begin with. Notice that there is some unwanted background noise here. So uh, there's a cymbal hit at the end uh, and then that gradually tapers away and we're left with this unwanted background noise. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work here uh, in order to tidy that up. Uh, what I can probably do is chop a bit more of this ending here off uh, and then apply a fade out carefully to the rest of it so that it blends in nicely. So I'm going to begin by uh, selecting some of that audio, delete on the keyboard, and then uh, let's say I decide to start the fade out here. More, more or less arbitrary choice. I'm going to listen to what it sounds like uh, and see what I think. Uh, and then effect menu, fade out, and let's have a listen. OK, it's smoother than it was before, but I'm still hearing quite a lot of that background noise around here. Uh, so what I think we need to do is cut off more audio and apply the fade out slightly earlier on. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo what I've just done. I, I could use the keyboard shortcut Control Z or I can go to the edit menu and do undo fade out. Uh, what I'm then going to do is select some more audio and trim even more off and then apply the fade out again in a slightly different place. Still not perfect but better uh, and I would carry on uh, doing that, making changes and adjusting it until I'm happy with the way that it sounds. OK, I've spent uh, a bit of time now tidying up the start and the end of the sound file uh, and I've now got them to uh, a position where I'm reasonably happy with them. So uh, they sound like this. Here's the start. 
So you can hear that I decided to remove those stick clicks after all. Uh, and the end sounds like this. So I've managed to minimise that background noise by applying fade outs and uh, trimming in various ways. Uh, what I might want to do now uh, is insert a little bit of silence at the start and at the end uh, so that when I play the sound file back it doesn't begin quite so suddenly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is move the cursor back to the very start of the file by pressing the home key and then uh, using the generate menu select silence uh, and this is how much silence I want to add at the cursor. So at the moment it says 30 seconds. Uh, I'm going to change that to 0.5, so half a second of silence. We can see that the sound file moves along a little bit. And now when I press home and play, we'll hear that the sound file begins after half a second silence. And uh, similarly, I'm going to do the same thing at the end. So uh, press the end key on the keyboard and that will take the cursor right to the end of the file and I'm going to insert half a second's worth of silence at the end there. In fact, I'm going to insert one second of silence at the end. Notice that I normalised the sound file before applying the fade in and fade out. Uh, this ensures that the fades are as smooth as possible. If I'd applied the fades to the unnormalised waveform and then normalised it, that would have resulted in a less smooth fade uh, with more of what is known as quantization noise. As a rule of thumb, you should normalise before doing any extra processing. Um, if I wanted to do any extra processing or editing to the sound file, then I would do it at this point. Um, but uh, a lot of that can be avoided by getting a really good recording in the first place, and that's really what you should aim for. I think I've done everything that I need to do now, uh, so uh, finally I'm going to listen to the sound file through from start to finish uh, just to make sure that it does everything that I want it to. Finally, I'm going to uh, save the project and now I'm ready to export the file, uh, which will be covered in another tutorial.